Welcome back, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, with our main uh, topic uh, today. Uh, we're discussing uh, uh, today uh, the uh, very well organized uh, uh, the uh, uh, Pharaoh's uh, Golden Parade that uh, Egypt organized yesterday. It was very well uh, organized. It was an amazing uh, celebration, actually, and it left uh, a good uh, echo in uh, all in the whole world and also in the hearts of uh, Egyptians. It was attended by President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi who was keen to receive uh, the uh, kings and queens uh, the mummies of uh, the 22 kings and queens uh, uh, that uh, were transferred from the Egyptian Museum in Tahrir uh, to the National Museum of Egyptian Civilization and uh, he was keen uh, to uh, receive them and uh, the 22 uh, kings and uh, queens 18 of uh, them are uh, kings and uh, four of them are queens. To shed more light on this, we have the pleasure to host this morning in the breakfast show, Mr. Ehab Kamel, the researcher and historian. Good morning, Mr. Kamel. Good morning. Mr. Kamel, uh, we also yesterday the very, the very well uh, organized uh, um, ceremony uh, uh, for uh, the transfer of uh, the Pharaoh's Golden Parade and transferring the 22 uh, mummies of kings and queens. Yes, this is um, an incident or an event which doesn't happen a lot in history. This is something that will happen once in a lifetime. So I think that we are very lucky to attend such an important event. And the whole world was actually interested to see such a great event and a great parade like this because it is a witness on Egypt's great civilization and the respect to our ancient kings because at the end of the day, they are our kings. Although they are thousands of years old, but still, they are our kings. So something like this, um, as I said before, um, the world is not going to see it a lot, only once. So I guess we were lucky to be attending something like this in the whole world, especially um, when you see that 22 mummies, 22, from uh, mummies that belongs to very important pharaohs. Some of these mummies are very important, like the mummy of Skinan Ra, the great hero who died in the battlefield against, yes, the, against, Hexos, the, Hex against the Hexos. Yes. Um, you see also Queen Ahmose Nefertari, yes. the wife of King Ahmos. Um, Queen Hatshepsut. Queen Hatshepsut. The very famous and uh, Course. Strong queen. Queen Hatshepsut is an evidence of mm. the on the status of women in ancient Egypt, and here I'd she like. She ruled for eighteen uh, years, I think. Uh, she ruled uh, for twenty long years. Time. Twenty, 20 years. years, actually. And actually, <coughs> over here, I'd like to stop for a moment because yeah. we always used to hear that um, the Europeans they always said well the greek civilization it's the source of all the modern civilization now and i used to laugh actually because when you compare the greek civilization to the egyptian civilization you'll find that the egyptian civilization was by far ahead of the greek civilization look at the stages of women in each civilization in ancient greece women were not allowed to go out of the house without the permission of her husband. In the Egyptian civilization, women were queens. Our women were queens, like Queen Hatshepsut, ruling successfully for 20 years, establishing a trade route, a new trade route with the land of Punt to keep the peace. That is an amazing way of thinking. Yes. So, you look at her, by all means, she's one of the greatest queens that had ever yes, ruled the ancient uh, world. Yes, so, uh, some um, analysts say uh, and historians uh, say that she, uh, she took the throne from uh, uh, Tahutmus III, who was the son of uh, Tahutmus II. Uh, but she, but she, uh, as he was at Hotmus the, the third, went to uh, for uh, to take uh, training in uh, the army or uh, something like that, and uh, she took uh, the, the the throne. But she was able to send um, um, make a good uh, economy 
uh, in uh, Egypt uh, and um, uh, exchange uh, a trade uh, with uh, Africa? Queen. Of course, Queen Hatshepsut's great achievement was the discovery of the East African coast. Nobody had ever went towards that direction before because, as you know, all the trade between ancient Egypt was with Western Asia, um, mm -hmm. Syria and Lebanon, and that's why there were very strong relations with the Phoenicians. But to go east, that was something very unheard of at that time. This was like um, a revolution yes. in the geographical discoveries, discovering the East African coast. Yes. Um, Hatshepsut, when she ruled, nobody expected her to be so successful. But yes. actually, Hatshepsut, when she ruled, lots of things had worked in her favor. First, that the crown prince was only an eight years old boy. So she ruled as his guardian, and she had the chance to send him to be educated in the temple of Mut in the Karnak. At the same time, she was supported by two strong men who stood next to her. Sinimut, her architect, who had designed the temple of Deir al-Bahari to her, yes. as well as Habu Sinib, the great politician. So being also a very strong woman, everything worked in her favor yes. to rule successfully for 20 years. Um, but it was, it ended up with a nice conflict yes. between her and the young crown prince. She claimed to justify her ascendance to the throne as a queen, which was against the ancient Egyptian traditions, that her father was not her father really, King Tutmosis I, and her father was the god Amun-Ra, who came to her mother, Queen Mutemwaya, disguised in the flesh form yes. of, um, uh, of her father, yes. god, uh, King, uh, King Tutmosis I, but did the teenage crown prince, yes. Stand still? No, he yes. did not. He claimed that while he was playing the role of a youthful priest in the Karnak, the procession of the god Amun changed its course and the statue of Amun stood in front of him yes. and it refused to move as an omen that he is to be the yes. pharaoh of Egypt. And it continued like this. It's a very interesting story which yes. is known by the name of the Tuthmose's problem. Yes, uh, Mr. Kamen, it would uh, take us uh, hours and days uh, to talk about e every uh, king and uh, queen, of course. Uh, but uh, back uh, to the uh, celebration and the ceremony and uh, the uh, uh, Pharaoh's Golden uh, uh, Parade, uh, what, what, uh, what is the message uh, that Egypt is sending to the world? Uh, from this uh, very well-organized celebration? It's a message that Egypt is a very ancient country with a great civilization. And it's a message that there's a young new republic is being formed with a very um, wise, creative um, leadership that knows what it's doing. Especially that when you look at what's going on in Egypt and what, had been go what has been going on this week and the way the Egyptian leadership had dealt with it, you feel that um, you're talking about an effective country with an effective leadership. Um, and as I said, there is now it's the rise of a new republic which is very effective in the region and in the continent and in the whole world. Yes. A rise of a new uh, republic under the leadership of uh, President Abdel Fattah Sisi. By all means, yes. Yes. Uh, yes. yes. I like this uh, sentence very much. 
Because, because that's what we saw yesterday. This is not uh, uh, just um, a ceremony or a celebration. This is uh, something that showed that the uh, Egyptians, uh, yes, uh, we can. We can organize a very uh, good uh, 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 celebration and uh, we are persistent and Egypt is safe, uh, secured, uh, despite also the um, uh, challenge of the pandemic of the coronavirus. We're organizing this uh, uh, great ceremony. Yeah, many things and many meanings that we are sending to the world. So what is uh, the uh, quick echo that we witnessed yesterday? Uh, since yesterday night, uh, we see that um, uh, there's an echo um, uh, an, an international echo and reactions after this uh, ceremony um, from the CNN, from uh, um, the tourism um, um, uh, companies around the world. We saw that uh, on the social media, uh, many foreigners uh, writing uh, to uh, us uh, and many of our friends around the world, yeah, many people, um, especially the CNN and the BBC, the the. So how do you see the reaction, the international reaction? I'm not surprised with the impact because yesterday everything was top-notch. Yes. Everything is very Egyptian and at the same time it's a message that Egypt is not the country that they show on Hollywood movies which mostly I, don't, I do not agree with. Yesterday look at the elements yes. of success, the history, the, how the show was directed, the costumes, the, the Egypt, coordination, the, coordination yes, the Egyptian Philharmonic Orchestra, yes. which is an evidence that these kinds of arts exist since a very long time in Egypt. Singing the chants of Isis, something that the whole world yes. never saw before. This is a pharaonic um, um, melody, of course. Absolutely, yes. that all the words are ancient Egyptian, yes. in ancient Egyptian. So, you're doing something playing in an area that nobody can compete with Egypt in. Yes. At the same time, put all this aside what made the difference is the vision. Yes. The vision. The leadership with its vision. Because as you know, no vision, no mission. Yes. It was a very, it was an excellent decision what they decided to join both ministries of tourism with antiquities. Yes. The result is what you saw yesterday. This is a vision, a pure vision. So, I believe that because we have a vision, we had this success. Yes. yes. The vision of what the country is going to be like in 2030. The leadership that thinks that way with such a vision, it's very simple. You will get such a success. Yes, uh, uh, President Abdel Fattah Sisi was keen yesterday to receive uh, uh, the uh, mummies of the kings and uh, the queens uh, as they arrived at uh, the National uh, Museum for Egyptian Civilization. How do you see this uh, message uh, as if uh, President Sisi is saying to the world, I admire my civilization, my kings and queens, uh, and also my people admires th them? Simply, he's showing is showing that he belongs to this country, that he is one of the people of and Egypt the whole who respects his heritage, yes. who respects his kings and all those who contributed to Egypt throughout the history. It's a message the whole world should respect. Yes. Um, I believe that um, Everybody was impressed when he saw him receiving the kings and queens on his own. Because, as I said, he is the ruler of Egypt at the moment. From the ancient Egyptian point of view, he is the president. He is the one who's ruling the country. So, at least, 
everyone would think of him as an equal. Yes, yes. You're talking at an alternation of generations from thousands of years ago up to the present day. Yes, I thank you very much for your time, for your valuable information. Mr. Ahab Kamel, researcher and historian, thank you very much for uh, joining us this morning. Thank you. thank you. I leave you now, ladies and gentlemen, with uh, my colleague, Nermeen Abdurrahman.